you are getting a lot of improvements. If you have any questions, please leave those in the comments below. We'd love to answer those. Check out our sample gallery. Links are in the description below. You can see the shots that we took on this camera. Do like, subscribe, comment. We always appreciate the feedback, and we shall see you guys soon for another episode of DP Review TV. Well, again, kudos to Chris and Jordan. They always do a good job over here at DP Review. But um, this is going to be my thoughts on the A7 IV. And since I was going to talk about it, I went ahead and watched that video again. I've watched that one like four or five times, maybe maybe more. I've watched a, a ton of different videos and reviews and all that fun stuff on YouTube about the A7 IV. I've read a lot about it, and I'm a little frustrated. I'll be honest. Um, I was so hoping to get you know, 4K 60 full frame in this one. I don't need 4K 20, 120. Um, it'd be nice, I ain't gonna lie. But I know they gotta, you know, do certain things to protect certain markets and all that fun stuff. And with the 33 megapixel sensor, I knew it would have been a challenge anyways, uh, just because of how the processor works and how it can, you know, put the, the math together and the image and all that good stuff. 33 is kind of a challenge. And that's the reason, one of the reasons why it took Sony so long to really or uh, sorry, Canon so long to provide ca uh, cameras that did 4K video work without a lot of crop, you know, because they were in that uh, that ballpark of 33 megapixels for a little while, you know, 5D Mark IV and all that. So, but anyways, um, frustrated to say the least, and hopefully uh, I'm not the only one out there. And here's why I'm, I'm frustrated. Okay, so a lot of the work I do when I go out, I'm truly a hybrid camera person. I use both. I do photography. I do video. Um, so if I have one camera in my hands and I'm doing certain shots, okay, and then all of a sudden I see something that's fixing to pop up that I can switch over and do the other aspect, whether it's photography or video, I need to be able to hit record and nothing change, you know? I need to be able to have the ability to capture that once in a lifetime moment in photography with 10 frames per second, uh, either uncompressed or lossless compressed raw. I don't need to have to worry about um, downgrading my image quality if I want high frame rates. You know, yes, it, in the A7 III, you go from, I think it's 14 bit down to 12 bit. So you do lose a little bit of detail, but your dynamic range doesn't change hardly at all. But with the A7 IV, going to a compressed RAW, that will change your dynamic range drastically. Um, so is it a big deal? No, not really, but I typically shoot in some extreme contrasty type situations where you know, low sun, sunset -y issues, um, foreground is in the shadow, backlit sunsets, backlit sunrises, all that fun stuff. So I need that full dynamic range a lot of the time. And, and if I'm snapping away and trying to capture, uh, it could be anything, you know, some guys giving a high five or, I, you know, I don't know, anything. I ain't gonna go into all the, the specifics, but, there's moments that pop up, I'm sure you know, in your world, uh, that you need 10 frames per second to be able to, you know, snap away and come back and adjust as needed. So you don't really get that with a 74 because you do have to go down the compressed raw. And if I'm not mistaken, you got to use that higher end uh, card, the, the compact, uh, compact flash or, or CFS, CFS, CF Express card. There it is, CFS, nope, CF Express card. <laughs> um, so you gotta spend a lot of money and not get a lot of storage. That's not appealing to me either. So even if you use the V90s, I don't think you can get the uh, 10 frames per second. And when you drop down to the next level of your high frame rates, if you do, you just use SD cards, or if you're in the lossless compressed or uncompressed, you go down to like five frames per second, five and a half frames per second. That's, that is not a wedding a bouquet toss type moment. You don't need to, no, <laughs> no. You need about, really, you need about eight 
to nine, but 10 is really, really ideal. You can, I mean, you can get a lot of good stuff. I mean, heck, if you want to splurge and get your A9 or A92 and, and go ahead and get 20 frames, obviously, yes. Or A1, what does that do, 30 frames per second? That's, that's nuts. Uh, that's video in photography world. But, so frustrating on, on that end. Um, 4K60 comes with a huge asterisk. It's 1.5 crop because it's in super 35 mode. Man, you know, if just think of it like this. If I'm out there with one camera and I am snapping photos, I, I get that 10 frames per second going, you know, I capture my shot, and then all of a sudden I see something else is happening at a different part of the event. I need to switch the video and capture that. I don't need to worry about my focal changes, my focal length change. I don't need that 1.5 crop. And with a lot of work that I do, my B-roll is typically in the higher frame rates, 60 and sometimes 120. And that is a challenge for me because I've, if I have a 16 to 35 on there, there's a reason why I need 16, you know? And if, if that video uh, necessity requires a 16 millimeter and I want to do 4K 60, it ain't happening. It's going to 24, 25, whatever the equivalent is there. That's, I mean, that's that's the game. But I could film it in standard frames, you know, 24, 30, or whatever, and I would keep my focal uh, distance the same. But again, if I need the higher frame rate, then I got to worry about the 1.5 crop. So from a true hybrid camera standpoint, from what, this is just me personally, I'm sure there's some people that, that work like me as well. It's, man, it's frustrating, very frustrating. So now I'm, I'm kind of in the situation of, do I save up a little bit more, get an A7S III and focus that one to be my primary video, keep the A7S III's around for photography work, you know, but who wants to carry two cameras around all the time? I don't. With a lot of stuff I do, I need to be light, mobile, you know, one can and one camera and yeah, one and done type of situation. Or do I need to save up even longer and just break break the bank and go ahead and get you an A1? Or possibly even an A9, A92, but it still doesn't do 4K60. A1 does. A1 covers a ton of video, you know? That that would be a beast to own. But do I want to have an A1, a $7,000 camera around a bunch of salt water sometimes or inclement weather out in the middle of nowhere? <laughs> uh, I don't know. So that's where I'm at. A7 IV is Japanese for frustrating mat. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's still a good camera. If you're an A7C person or if you're APS-C, if you're a 6600 kind of person, this is gonna be a huge, huge upgrade for you, huge, for any of those cameras. But going from an A7 III to A7 IV, I mean, that's a sidestep at best, you know? Yes, you do get all the extra features along with it. Yes, you do get 33 megapixels. Yes, yes, yes. You get those. But from a workflow standpoint, it's a frustrating thing for me. So I'll be waiting until probably January when uh, the rental companies will, will have them available to rent. And I'll probably rent one just to see because I'm not dropping, you know, 25 or essentially 26 or $2,700 into a camera that I don't know if I really like, you know? I want to try it out first and really give it a good effort, you know, because I'm only dropping, say, 150 or so dollars uh, to rent it, uh, maybe 200 and, you know, use it for a few days and really put it through its paces and see if I like it, you know. Like Philip Bloom says all the time, the paper doesn't tell you what the camera can do, you know. Only when you get the camera in your hand will you realize what it can and can't do and whether or not you like it, you know. Um, and that's why I say all the time at the end of my videos, get the gear that's right for you because, you know, an A7 IV might be right for you. It's not right for me right now. That's for sure. 
it's uh, one of those very frustrating um, situations that I'm in. So uh, holding pattern, you know, holding pattern. I'll probably stick with my A7 for a good little while, but production needs is calling for 4K60 bad, bad. Um, I really want that flexibility in post, you know. <sighs> so that's my two cents. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, if you're in the same boat as me or if you're gung-ho and you absolutely love A7 IV, let me know. Show, tell me your opinion down below because it's, yeah, it's a frustrating one for me, but I'm sure there's plenty of people that are absolutely stoked about this camera, and you should be, you know, because it is a great camera. I mean, it's just a little frustrating for me. <laughs> but that's it, guys. As usual, get the gear that's right for you because only you can do your projects. And since we usually only have one chance to get it right, why not do it right? Just do it once. Till next time, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you.